Hey what's up guys, I'm Nazio Cole and with the PS5 and Xbox Series X on the way in a few months, today I thought we'd take the time to talk about a few things that I think that all next gen games should have. The first thing is crossplay. Now, crossplay was nothing that was impossible before. It was just something that was held back by Microsoft and mostly Sony. Now before it was kinda like you just got the console that your friends had. It was either an Xbox 360 or a PS3 and a Wii because everyone had a Wii. And I actually made some of my best friends due to just being on Xbox. Now we have big AAA titles like Fortnite and Call of Duty that show that crossplay can and does work. So I really see no good reason for new multiplayer games coming out to not have crossplay. The next thing that I think all next gen games should have is multiple save slots. This is something that has really frustrated me for a while and only recently did Just Cause 4, one of my most played and favorite games of all time, get multiple save slots. Before that, you just had to restart your entire storyline if you wanted to play again but under different circumstances. So picture this, you've maxed out the game, you've gotten everything that you can ever get in the game, all the unlockables, everything's unlocked, all the characters, everything, right? But you want to restart because you've honestly forgotten what the first part of the game felt like to play and you want to replay it. But you want to keep all the things that you've accumulated. How will this happen? How could you do this? Multiple save slots. It's really not that hard to implement multiple save slots. Life is Strange, Tomb Raider, Watch Dogs 2 all have them. So I, I really don't see as far as story games go, I really don't see any reason why they shouldn't have multiple save slots. Coming at number three, we have Better Anti-Cheat. This is mostly aimed, well, in, almost entirely aimed at multiplayer games. Uh, Anti-Cheat, profanity filters, things of that nature. The fact that people in an online game can get banned for simply having a Discord overlay while there are hackers running around your game, causing havoc, making the game not fun, it's just crazy to me. I don't know the whole process that goes into an anti-cheat, but it just seems like, for some games especially, more than others, it, it just seems like they've been really lazy. But speaking of lazy game developers, that goes into the next point of finished games at launch. Look, I'm pretty sure a lot of gamers have talked about this before, but all we want really is a finished game at launch. I don't care. Like, you know, obviously you want to play the next game after you've finished another game. You want to play the next game in that series as soon as possible but I also don't want it to be disappointing at launch. I'd rather wait two more years than expected for a game that I really like than have it come out a year after the previous game came out and have it be full of bugs and just generally not fun to play. Like I said with Just Cause 4, if they would have just taken a few extra months of development time to fix all those bugs that they fixed in patches after the game came out, then it would have been a much more positive experience when the game first came out. And I get that they were trying to make deadlines and whatever for the holiday season, but it's just, you know, it's really anti-consumer. You spend $60 on, the, on a game, which uh, honestly is, is a lot of money. $60, you buy four games, that's like $240. You could have bought a new graphics card with that amount of money. So more QA testing, more development time to, you know, buff out those bugs when the game launches would just be really, really, really appreciated and should be the standard anyways. And the last thing that I think all next gen games should have is a modular file size. Now this is mainly aimed at PC because games for consoles, people know the hardware, it's gonna be the same hardware on each console, so developers can more accurately aim the game's graphical settings at the hardware that they're developing for. But with PC, there are so many different hardware combinations, so many different types of graphics cards, CPU, memory combinations that it's just impossible to predict. That's why there are settings to change on, there's graphical settings to change on PC games. You wanna run your stuff high? Can you run your stuff high, ultra, low, medium? But if you know that you can't run the ultra high graphics, then why should those textures even be included? If we had modular file sizes for games, we wouldn't end up with games that are 227 gigabytes big. Like, I'm just telling you now, I can't run everything at Ultra, especially if I'm trying to record or stream on Call of Duty. So if I could just remove all those Ultra high and sometimes even medium textures, then I, I have a feeling it, it would reduce the file size and open up more space for more games. I think that would be a really cool addition to a lot of games. And then it could have something like there could be like a built in tool on Steam or Epic or GOG or whatever. And it could like scan your PC. It could have like standardized quality levels, basically just low, medium, high or low, medium, high, ultra. And whatever your PC, like if your PC is powerful enough 
to run Ultra, then you can download all of them or you can exclude Ultra. But if your PC is not powerful enough to run Ultra, it's only powerful enough to run medium or high, then you could have the option to just get rid of all those textures and models and things of that nature that you wouldn't be able to run anyways and then more space. I think that'd be a really cool idea. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are some ideas that for next-gen games that they should have? And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.